morning. <laughs> How is everyone today? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> That's exactly the energy we need today, so thank you for bringing that. I'm Maggie Cauley. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, I serve as the Executive Director of OpenStreetMap US. Um, we've been hosting this conference as a nonprofit for over a, is it a decade? Where's the Indies? When was the first one? <laughs> Since 2010. Um, and it's, it's always a, a really great time. Um, and this year, I'm very, very excited to welcome you all to Richmond, Virginia, and my alma mater, VCU. Um, I spent 12 years of my life in Richmond, and four of them at this very university, um, studying urban planning. And it's where I found my love of maps. So kind of serendipitous that life brought me back here a long time later to be able to welcome all of you to this wonderful campus. So glad to have you. <coughs> ha, ha, the, the haze. <laughs> but we're here this weekend, you know, not only to celebrate this wonderful city, but also this wonderful community. Um, we spend 362 days of the year trying to build the best map of the world. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> but I invite you this weekend to, to kind of step away for that for three days. Take three out of that 365 and try to help us build the best community in the world. Um, that's what this weekend is about. We get to meet the people behind the usernames. You know, online we meet IE273 and Sherbert and Maggie Maps. It's the lone wolf. But here we get to meet James and Brian and well, Maggie Maps is kind of obvious, but. <laughs> so find those folks behind those usernames, make those connections, because it makes the rest of those 362 days even more worthwhile. Now I go through the logistics. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna start with, who's here for the first time? This is my favorite. Look at all those hands. Woo, welcome. <laughs> keep them up, keep them up. Let me look around. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I love that. Uh, um, last year we, we were in Tucson, and you know I always ask that question, and half the room is also new. So it's also one of the reasons we change cities every year, because we want to bring community in all over the country. And as you know, it's a very big country, so we can't ask everyone to move around. We have to go to them. So welcome, and I hope you come back to the next one. Code of conduct, we do have a code of conduct. We, TLDR, be nice <laughs> to each other. If you do have an issue, um, there are a few people around if they could raise their hands. Uh, you can come to any of the staff or any of the board members um, and they will help you. So don't hesitate if anything's awry to let us know. Do some thank yous. Um, I want to thank the OpenStreetMap US board. If, if you all could stand up, we're going to do some calisthenics so you could stand up. Um, give these folks a round of applause. These are all volunteers who <laughs> help to support all year long. <laughs> some of them are meeting for the first time in person at this conference, which is great. Now, this is the one we really have to get our clapping ready for. So the, the OpenStreetMap US staff has worked tirelessly to pull this off. So we all have regular day jobs and this is what we do for extra time. You know, this is our extra credit. Um, so I would love Jess, Quincy, Nelly. <laughs> Thank you very much. The other thing that makes this conference really special is that we have volunteers from the community choose the program every year. So, you know, we've got 100, you know, this year we had over 100 submissions. We have 110 speakers, by the way. Um, and the program committee goes through and they sort the talks and they, they choose the ones and that's what ends up in the program. So, program committee, where are you at? Stand up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for all of your insight and opinions and help over the last few months. We met every couple weeks putting this together um, and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. Volunteers. How many volunteers do we have this year? Ooh. <laughs> Lots of volunteers. I'm not going to ask everybody to stand up, but we could raise, yeah, stand up. Get up, get up. <laughs> yes, thank you volunteers. <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> Sponsors, you never have to stand up. So if you're sponsoring this event, can you stand up? <laughs> Told you, we're doing our exercises. <laughs> yes, look at all those people. <laughs> Thank you a million times over. <laughs> We have a platinum sponsor this year with Meta, so thank you, Meta, for stepping in. Um, and our gold sponsors. Yeah, Meta. Meta in, a lot of Meta in the house. <laughs> it's here for our, our gold sponsors. We have All Trails. <laughs> Esri. Locana. And Microsoft. Microsoft swooped in at the last minute, so thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> The other thing we try to do every year is bring in scholars from all over the country and all over the world. Um, it can be very challenging, especially in these times, to get visas and logistics and sending letters, but we make it work and people, people come. So um, let's welcome our scholars this year. Who's here on a scholarship? We love having you here. Please stand up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I promise the standing is going to end soon. <laughs> the other exciting thing that we launched last year was our organizational membership. Many of you in the room are individual members, and we thank you for participating in OpenStreetMap US. We recently lost an organizational program, and we have three members at this time, and we're growing. So thank you to our, our first round members uh, for, for jumping into this program and working with us to make it really great. Development seed, Mapbox, and just this week, Sensing jump down. So. Uh, another announcement tonight, we will have a social event. Everyone's invited. It's included in your ticket. We'll be at the Science Museum of Virginia. Um, you should have gotten a code in your email to either take an Uber for half off. Thanks, Uber, for that. Um, and also, if you want to walk with folks, you can meet in front of the Gladding Residence Hall and take a walk. It's it's a pretty walk through the fan, so uh, also a way to get there. Um, there will be food, there will be dinner, music, um, we'll have blues. Does anybody have last time for the squid potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> I think Riley was there. <laughs> so tonight we're going to have another local band. It'll be blues. Um, a good time. Just go off and steam, have a good time with each other. Um, and next, it is my great pleasure help me welcome you all to invite Dr. Lee Schwartz to the stage. Lee is the geographer of the United States and director of the Geographer in Global Issues, where he directs research and analysis on global issues primarily related to complex humanitarian emergencies and environmental sustainability. We didn't know we had a geographer of the United States. He is the State Department's eighth geographer. This position was established in 1921 and bears the statutory responsibility for providing guidance to all federal agencies on questions of international boundaries, we all know how hard that is, <laughs> and sovereignty claims. Um, help me welcome Lee to the stage, please. Okay, thank you, good morning. Uh, when, Maggie, uh, when Maggie asked me to, to speak here, I, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, I actually addressed the State of the Map Asia in Kathmandu in 2019. Uh, this is um, equally as exotic a locale as, as that location. Uh, and one thing that uh, struck me about that event was it was shortly after the major earthquake they had had uh, in Nepal that many of you probably were involved in providing um, map data for. And I think it pointed out that, that volunteer mapping can, can certainly make a difference, can save lives, uh, can provide uh, help to organizations that are involved that don't have the access to local knowledge and information. And I think that's the main message I want to give today. Uh, I, I kind of asked Maggie what she wanted me to say, and, and other than uh, keep it brief, she didn't really give me much advice. Uh, so <laughs> I will keep it brief, so uh, bear with me. But I, I am passionate about mapping. I think that's the, that's the message I have. My office uh, provides, uh, has provided maps for over 100 years for the Department of State and other federal agencies. I find uh, not only value in map data, but I also find value in the, in the beauty of cartography. And I think that's a message that I'd like to leave you with as well, that 
A mapping is, is about data, it's about the integrity of data, but it's also about the, the beauty of maps and the fact that your maps can actually, can actually make a difference. Uh, my job at the Office of Geography in the Department of State is in the Intelligence Research Bureau of the Department of State. And increasingly, over the past 20, 25 years, uh, we have found tremendous value in open, in open data, uh, where it used to be that you know, the value of information was only important if it was classified, you know, that that's what people wanted. Uh, and there's been increasing recognition throughout government and defense and intelligence agencies that there's tremendous value in citizen mapping, in understanding local knowledge, in the fact that human security is as important as national security, and that you can't really uh, provide that human security or help provide that human security unless you have you know, in information from the local people who are actually providing maps of their own geographic milieu. So that's been a, a trend I've seen over the past uh, 20 years, I think, and there's a, there's a talk uh, tomorrow, just before lunch, I think, uh, for some of the federal agencies that are increasingly using uh, open data uh, for mapping. Josh Campbell in my office is going to be part of that, so I encourage you all to, to go to that session. My office also has actually a long history with the, with the OpenStreetMap community, uh, dating back to, uh, I think for my involvement in this, goes back to some of the Camp Roberts relief um, experiments that went on in California uh, in the late 2009s aughts area. How many people were at, at those events here? Oh, well, Michelle, I just see you walked in, huh? Great. I think that was a groundbreaking effort in working not only with, you know, humanitarian open street map team and, and OSM and, and, and uh, walking papers and development seed, uh, but it also got the federal government, uh, defense and, and intelligence agencies very much involved in trying to figure out how they could support the open mapping community, providing uh, processed commercial satellite imagery. It was a very, uh, it was a very, uh, it, was, it was a heavy lift back then. It's become, it's become routine now where there's direct access to a lot of the commercial vendors. But at the time, it was, it was quite, a, quite an intricate process to figure out how we, could, how we could work to make satellite imagery available remotely so that people mapping in their basements could be as important and provide as much value as someone you know, at a site of a disaster or, or uh, mapping uh, an area where access might not be as easy for uh, governments and NGOs and United Nations organizations that are trying to provide relief. So that was, for me, uh, an eye-opening an eye -opening, uh, sort of seminal um, series of exercises, and it led my office to develop what we called, at the time, Imagery to the Cloud, which then developed into a program at the State Department called MapGive, where we try to uh, help provide commercial satellite imagery to, to humanitarian disasters. Uh, and, and allow citizen mappers to have easy access to information. Uh, and so it's always fun to, to be at the start of something which now, uh, for those of you who weren't involved, seems routine, but at the time was, was, uh, was quite a monumental effort. And I thank everybody who was in this room who helped, who helped as part of that effort. I also should mention, I think when you talk about citizen mapping, I think most people here <coughs> understand uh, or are aware of the history of of John Snow in, in London, which is sort of the, uh, the landmark event of, of, of citizen mapping where, they, where uh, he mapped the cholera outbreak in Soho in 1854, I believe, and, and identified the fact that it was a waterborne disease, which they didn't know at the time because of a, of a water source on, on Broad Street. It's kind of a famous, famous story for, for uh, open mappers. Well, we, we were dealing with the same thing in the COVID-19 origins uh, question, which my office was very much involved in, uh, which basically, from an epidemiological and, 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 and medical geography perspective, went through the same exercise of trying to track you know, the, the distribution of the disease, trying to locate uh, a point where it might have, uh, might have originated, uh, still is a, is a big question, but, but it got me thinking about the fact that um, the same basic techniques and methodologies from the middle of the 19th century uh, are still important to use today when it comes to uh, getting local knowledge from, from uh, you know, in situ data collection and mapping. Something else that uh, I was involved with 
years ago when I was, uh, when I was teaching college, it was doing the, a debate over, uh, which many of you may be aware of or not aware of, over uh, public participatory GIS, PPGIS, and volunteer geographic information, you know, VGI. And it was kind of a raging debate in academic circles back then. It was sort of a neo-Marxist volunteer geographic information that it's only valuable if it's freely volunteered as opposed to public participation GIS where, you know, if the man is telling you what to collect, then it's not really free and open and it doesn't have value. And I always felt, and I took this into my current job, that the most important thing for me was the accuracy of the data. And I didn't really care so much about how it was collected or who was directing the collection, but the important thing is the accuracy of the data, the verification of the data, uh, the importance of metadata. Uh, so data integrity, I think, is important, and I think that's what open mapping continually has to uh, revisit uh, in terms of not just when the data are collected, but when you revisit the data and, and how you can verify the data. Uh, it's, it's challenging what scale the data are put at, and that's another message I think that's important to, for me to give you here for open mapping. And I think it all comes down to uh, the democratization of data, uh, you know, the value of data being openly available uh, is, is the drive behind open mapping. Uh, and I think with the democratization of data, we can all feel as if we're making a difference. I think right now we're seeing in, uh, in current events, we've got, you know, not only do we have the uh, shootings that recently took place uh, here in v at, on VCU's campus with the high school graduation, but we've got the, the uh, uh, wildfires in, in Canada that are, you know, causing a little bit of um, air quality issues here uh, right, right, right today in Richmond. And that just brings to mind, I think, uh, a couple of issues that historically have been at the genesis of citizen mapping, and that is uh, crime mapping, security mapping. I think early on in the days of GIS, uh, that proved the value of, of, of citizen science in terms of locating events and, and, uh, and areas where people were less secure to provide information to local law enforcement. And also uh, environmental issues, I think, uh, have been driven historically by, by local citizens mapping areas of carcinogenic um, uh, toxins or water pollution or areas that are prone to forest fires. So, I just wanted to uh, identify that we have a couple of current events now that have a long, a long history of, of uh, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, having value from uh, participatory GIS citizen science. A couple of, uh, couple of things I want to just uh, mention in closing. Uh, authoritative data, you hear that term a lot. Uh, I don't like the term because that tends to be, you know, data that is purchased and somehow, uh, if, or data that is provided by a government. And so, in my, in my circles, I'm frequently faced with someone telling me this is authoritative data because somehow it comes from an authority. And so, I, I always question when someone ascribes the term authoritative to data. Uh, I'm mostly interested in good data and accurate data, and I've been, I've been uh, in many situations where people are using bad data or old data just because it's authoritative and it comes from an authoritative source. I think that's a, that's a danger that we knowingly put data on maps that we know are not, are not current or not accurate. I also think uh, it's important to understand the value of, of equity and ethics in mapping, that there is a certain danger to providing information with local knowledge and we always have to be respectful of, of ethical issues and understanding that the more we can differentiate data on maps, the better we can help in terms of issues of equity. And then finally, I think one of the great values of local mapping is we should never underestimate the value of the human stories behind the map data, right? Because that's the real value of, of local knowledge, that you're not just putting points and polygons and vectors on a map, but you can provide the local content to help understand the human condition of where people live. All right, I just want a few shout outs to some of my uh, colleagues and some others here. I want to um, thank for the work that they've done and we're going to see uh, some of our colleagues uh, from the federal government um, tomorrow. I want to uh, have a shout out to USA, USAID and Carrie Stokes 
and the Youth Mappers. How many people here have been in Youth Mappers programs? All right. Uh, fabulous, fabulous program. Uh, some, some of uh, our colleagues from George Washington University and, and West Virginia University and others kind of in the local area have been, have been shakers and movers in the Youth Mappers world. And also, I think, uh, how many people here are, are just volunteers because they like mapping? They're not part of an organization that actually does mapping, you know? Cool, that's great. Because I think that's really where we get the bang for our buck, that, that uh, we just have people who think that, that mapping is fun, because at the end of the day, I think that's what it's all about. Finally, I threatened that I was going to um, mention this to Maggie, and I was, I was questioning whether I should or not. But I think I'm going to talk about a program I'm going to initiate at this year's, um, at this year's uh, conference, and that is the burning hat. All right, you all know about the burning man. Well, pretty soon, starting perhaps next year, I'd like to initiate the burning hat. And that is, everybody who comes to State of the Map conferences brings a hat from their organization, right? And then we build a big bonfire. <laughs> we throw the hat into the bonfire, tossing away our institutional shackles so that we can really be free and open. And I think we're going to start, it's going to be very big next year. We're going to have a small bonfire. Pretty soon we're going to have to move out to Nevada. Uh, <laughs> we'll have some bands. I think Maggie's already lining up some bands for the big Burning Hat events. And uh, just keep that in mind. So Burning Hat 2024. All right, and Another shout out I forgot to give. I want to I give a big shout out to Ambassador Alan Mustard here in the front row, who uh, many of you know when he was our ambassador uh, to Turkmenistan. He and his wife uh, mapped over a quarter of a million points, and he was then um, snagged to be the chairman of the um, OSM board, I believe, for a couple of years. And I think uh, being at the State Department, we really saw the value in having just really a, a single person uh, initiate so much mapping. And if you could just multiply uh, Ambassador Mustard by, by 100 or 200 people, I think we could, you know, we could densify the entire map of the world. So uh, shout out to Ambassador Mustard. And I'm very much looking forward to the next talk on climate and equity, because I think those are issues that citizen mappers can certainly make a big difference. So thank you very much.